barbershop conversation, guys, feel free to hit the subscribe button. So, um, response video to this motherfucker calling Rock Waka Faka. Let's see, what did he call him? This is a quote, y'all, in 2017. You greasy black nigga, son of a bitch, black bastard. End quote. That's my response. Now, I get a lot of slack from from some subscribers and non-subscribers who come to my channel and say, I'm a black channel. Why do I hate on Oscar De La Hoya? He did nothing wrong. Um, why do I dislike Donald Trump? Let me tell you guys something. I was born black and I'm going to die black. And and I know as a 39 year old, um, by all accounts, successful black man, I know the plight of a black man. I'm not even going to pretend that it's a level playing field because I have one leg on each side of the fence now. I'm not even going to pretend. All right. And when you hear a white dude on a radio show talk like this, in open air, I know, I know my voice has value and I know the importance of it. And I know the first thing I must is protect them, you know, until they do something egregious and I gotta, and I have to report that. But until then, I will forever, forever support. Uh, black media, uh, since you guys know me through boxing, black fights, I will always protect them first. When you hear shit like this in open air and Donald Trump becomes president and we know 40% of the people that voted for him, and, and I'm, I don't know if I'm being easy or I'm being tough, 40% of the people that voted for him were closet racists. We hear it now. This motherfucker would have never said this if President Obama was president. You see the confidence this man has? Um, I'm about to Google Waka Faka response. I just been in an emotional tirade and I figured I need to do a video on this shit and, and ran out. But this this propels me and encourages me to, to continue my mission statement. It doesn't deter me. I am I will never emasculate myself for a white man. Under any circumstances, no, I don't. I don't play them games, you know. Um, and the truth of the matter is, I am subjugated to a lot of that stuff because of how I dress. I'm always in sweats and a t-shirt. If you guys see me on video when I'm when I'm covering fights, it's just so comfortable, man. I got to run around every interview. I have to, I have to run to get there, or walk fast. Like it's all. It's so. Because there's so many people to interview, so many things to do, as you guys know me through the boxing channel. And I'm a handyman throughout the day, too, because I'm working. But but I don't wear my success on my sleeve. So but so sometimes white people think that they can subjugate me to being an inferior person. No, that's intolerable. No way, no how, no way will I accept that. And I encourage you guys not to accept that. And I'm not saying be a racist, be a bigot, but see your black skin as the greatest skin on the face of this earth. That's all I'm saying. And this is this furthers our proof that they have no respect for us. I, I tell this story quite frequently. My editor was having a business meeting with a uh, with a multimillionaire. And he has a uh, a high school all star basketball game in Los Angeles. It's the CIF versus city section all star game. Right. And he's asked him. He wants him to help, but. Before they ask the guys for a donation, the white guy is like, yeah, I, I want to have a booth. I want to do X, Y, Z. I want to do A, B, C. He said, oh, yeah, you can do all that. And then when, when he put the dollar amount out there, the multimillionaire clasped his lips together and started saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He wanted us out the office. So, And, and then we were walking to the car because I drove. And it was in downtown Los Angeles. And he says, they call me Fred. If you don't know me, you call me Frederick. But he says, uh, he says, don't ever forget. You'll always be a nigga to them. And I carry that. I carry that with me, man. And I have a mixed, I have a mixed son. And, and he has black skin, right? And I can, 
And I am anxiously awaiting for his grandparents to have that interaction with a non-black person when they're walking around with this brown, because they're so fair-skinned, when they're walking around with this brown-skinned kid and they get the evil eyes or something like that. But um, let's... And, and we got to fight strategically and intelligent. I'm not asking you guys to go pick up a gun and ride out on a nigga. I'm not asking you guys to do that. I'm asking you guys to educate yourself, educate your children. And it's not formally because I would be as intelligent, if not more intelligent, if I didn't go to college. So I'm not saying you guys got to get a formal education because we all know that's skewed anyway. When they pawn you off from high school to college so you can get in debt and, and they keep track of all your finances. You know, But I'll do a video on that another time. But uh we got to fight intelligently we have to educate ourselves and more importantly so and in addition to educating ourselves supporting one another you know um you guys know i'm allies with quote unquote black channels and i've had my spits with some quote unquote white channels <laughs> but i'm unwavering on my mission statement listen i because you guys know, I'm going to use boxing as an analogy. Even in when I'm bidding for a property, I go in expecting to win. But them fucking Koreans got so much money. I don't know. They must be. Man, I go to these auctions. I ain't lying. I, I don't want you guys to be like racist. I'm not taking money. But they got so much money, man. They Like they print money when I be going bidding on these properties. But in, anyhow, more over than that. Everyone, like... I consider the boxing family my family, right? My weekend family, as I call them, right? White, black, Chinese, whatever you want to call them, tall, short, or brown, I respect them all. But they all know, from Lance Pugmire to Dan Raphael, they know my mission statement. It's, I am unwavering on why I am in the media. And I will forever be unwavering. And this proves me or validates my purpose. Listen to this guy talk validates my purpose. So anyways, I'm going to stop there. I'm probably going to do another video tonight when I've, when I've calmed down. I'm actually going to a black film festival this week. If you guys are in L.A., please go to the Pan-African Film Festival. Uh, it's probably top five. It's definitely a top ten film festival in America. But in terms of black, probably top two or three. It's, it's 200 films. It's 12 days. <clears throat> I've won the film festival. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, I won it on uh, Inner City Champions. Go ahead and Google Google that if you want. You can watch the trailer on that. And uh, But anyways, Barbershop Conversations. Let's fight together, guys. And for all my white compadres, Mexican compadres, stand up too. Stand up for this injustice shit. My brown brothers, stand up for your community. You know? Don't go to Taco Bell and buy your burritos. Go to Maria's barbecue shop i mean barbecue shop <laughs> i try to <laughs> talk and talk to <laughs> y'all can eat barbecue too my mexican brothers y'all can eat barbecue too but don't go to taco bell go to uh maria's maria's taco shack go support your latin sister on the corner selling them tacos for a dollar and, and them quesadillas for three dollars you know I mean, they have them all day in the hood go there i know taco bell is a little cheaper you know you get the 79 59 cent burrito soft shell hard shell Whatever the case may be, but you guys have an obligation and responsibility too. So, uh, barbershop conversation. Feel free to hit the subscribe button, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.